hello everyone welcome back to my unreal engine open world tutorial series so in this episode i am going to work on adding meshes adding these procedural meshes uh, to this procedural advanced foliage system that i have used to create a, a procedural crop field system as you can see in this demonstration so if you want uh, uh, using this system I have placed these uh, meshes as instanced static meshes defined bound by the boundary of this spline this white spline I can modify the boundaries like this so as I change these boundaries uh, the crop field will adapt itself to limit the meshes so these foliages to place only inside that boundary so that's what I am going to show you today and as always this episode is sponsored by these generous patrons thank you very much for the support you guys are giving me okay so this is what we have at the moment we can identify the points inside this polygon uh, identified by the yeah, by this spline we have created uh, and the boundary we have created with this spline so right okay so to place actually place whatever the mesh we need to place on these points so for this i'm going to add well not just one mesh i'm going to add multiple meshes because uh, just like this procedural road tool i am going to add an array of procedural elements and there you will be able to add multiple types of meshes with all these settings right let's go here and add a new variable I'll call it what should I call it yeah let's call it procedural elements just like before and it should be in the type of procedural element an array right now this is where we place we draw the line trace so okay in this part i have to do the element placing procedural mess placing i should do it right here okay but before that i have to set up the static meshes of each of these procedural elements so let's do it like this for each loop I'll collapse this to a node I'll collapse this node wait what did happen right collapse nodes initialize procedural meshes okay so for each of these elements I need to 
let me break this if I do not have a valid HISM which stands for hierarchically instanced static mesh just like in this procedural object I'm going to do the same thing here like this if it is valid then I don't have to do anything if it is not valid I have to add hierarchical instanced static mesh component and then promote it to a variable I'll call it HISM current then I have to set tick mesh I do it like this if it is valid then I don't have to do this part I can skip that part and as for the new mesh I can use this a mesh component we have defined for this procedural element here that means the object that we will define in this space okay so if you are not familiar with this structure that I have used here this is a custom structure that I have defined here and we define this when we work on procedural object which we use to create uh, procedural roads and bridges and all the things that you can see in this level you can refer to that pre previous videos if you want to know about them right this part is done uh, I have to clear instances I need to add this add this to the this structure so get a reference not a copy with this current index in the loop and set member the member we need to set is HISM set it like this okay initialization part is now done now let's go here and do the placing part so to do the placing part yeah let's do it like this branch to see if we get a valid hit and then add a reroute node here then I will select this two and collapse to collapse nodes so we can keep the code clean place meshes
this must be hit and this must be We can break this to get the location, uh, impact, impact point and other things that we need to get. So now we need to place the objects. So let's get the procedural elements. And for each element. Let's break this. Mm -hmm. Add instance in world space. All right. So here we need to do that little trick we did here to get the world transform to con and local world space and local space calculations so i'll copy this to into here and yeah this is the world space local space conversion can i copy that can copy it Plan point rotation is zero and rotation offset is this one and spline point location that means this hit location in this case and location offset is this one and rotation variation is this one So for the world transform now we can get this object if you want to take a look at the inside of this it is like this we develop this when we work in on procedural object get transform get world transform and plug it here For now, that should be all. Uh, here we have to connect the false output to out. And also we need to make this public visible to the outside so we can modify it from the editor detail panel oh, wait a minute mm -hmm. yeah that's all let's compile this and okay now I have added one element here this one instead of this uh, this rock not rock this uh, block let's add some plant so we can clearly see the effect all right now right 
this is our procedural plants procedural crop feed um, I'll remove this time I have added on the line trace now because it becomes annoying now I'll keep it only for five seconds okay I changed the bush to this one so you can easily see that and right now as you can see this yeah if I want I can expand the boundaries like this We need to fill the whole area. Right, this is good. Okay, now as you can see, this uh, item does not have any rotation or no scale variation. So let's add some randomization. Scale randomization 1.5 wait did we use it anywhere no ah okay here we set only the location and rotation for the scale we can do it like this let me break this mm, no let me recombine I'll plug the scale max and scale me as well so I'll get this one set world scale for this we don't need to add a local scale because well the scale is good enough scale max and scale me so this one I can do a random uh, float in range so the minimum would be this scale min and the maximum is scale max and yeah when I compile it will be applied to the world transform scale part so when I compile I should see the scale randomizations yeah as you can see wait did it work let's see let's add some drastic changes ah uh, right yeah some of them are very small some of them are large I'll do it like this okay and let's add some uh, rotation variation as well 
right now they have different rotations and I I haven't defined a way to do give some random offset to these things these uh, meshes I could do that too but for now let's not do it if I want I could define another variable here like uh, as a with this scale max so no not with the scale max I could add another vector with the uh, location of set variation but I think you can figure it out let me know if you can't so what else we need to do here yeah uh, let's add one of these three stumps in the crop field so can do it like this go here and select this object If I want to place one stump for each instance of this, uh, we can do it like this. Add another element. No, I'll duplicate this one. And instead of this mesh, I'll drag and drop. Sorry, this here. Oh, it's too big. Okay. You get the idea, right? let's add some offset here about 100 units okay this is better right now this is the procedural crop field we have developed this is the final result and you can customize this uh, anywhere you fit anywhere you want to that fits your game um, hope I made something useful and uh, if you like to support my work you can get the membership of my patron club link would be in the description below and also I have released the project files for this uh, procedural system you can download them as well and thanks for watching see you in the next episode goodbye